For our look at the arterial system, we begin again at the level of the heart, with blood leaving the conus arteriosus. From the conus arteriosus, blood flows into the ventral aorta to take deoxygenated blood to the gills. From the ventral aorta, leave five pairs of afferent branchial arteries. We can count them in sequence. This is the fifth, the fourth, the third branches about halfway along the ventral aorta, and the first two pairs of afferent branchial arteries branch up in this region. The afferent branchial arteries then take blood to the gill tissue, where it is oxygenated. Oxygen-rich blood then collects in a system of efferent branchial arteries. There are four pairs of efferent branchial arteries. The efferent branchial artery system begins with four and a half collector loops. These are circular arteries which span the gill pouches, and there are four plus one half of these loops. Each collector loop consists of two vessels, a pre-traumatic branch and a post-traumatic branch, which forms one collector loop. The post-traumatic branch, as you can see, is the larger of the two vessels. The last collector loop is incomplete as it has only a pre-traumatic branch. The pre- and post-traumatic branches of adjacent collector loops are connected via cross trunks. Small vessels located in this region are called cross trunks. They collect blood from the pre-traumatic branch of the loop behind them and take blood into the post-traumatic branch of the loop anterior. The blood then passes from the collector loops to the four pairs of efferent branchial arteries. These arteries then converge to form the dorsal aorta. From the efferent branchial arteries, most of the blood flows posteriorly via the dorsal aorta. But another small vessel, the pharyngoesophageal artery, takes blood back towards the pharynx and esophagus. It arises from the second efferent branchial artery and supplies the roof of the pharynx and the esophagus. Blood travels to the head from the hyoidean efferent artery which arises from the dorsal most part of the first collector loop. The hyoidean efferent artery also receives blood from a small vessel, the paired dorsal aorta. These vessels come together to form the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid arteries then turn medially enter the chondrocranium and supply the brain. At the point where the internal carotid artery turns medially, a small stapedial artery arises. It travels to supply the orbit and snout. An apparent spiracular artery arises from the middle of the first collector loop to supply the pseudobranch. An efferent spiracular artery leaves the pseudobranch and unites eventually with the internal carotid artery. Coming from the ventral end of the first collector loop is the external carotid artery. It supplies the lower jaw. A final vessel arising from the second collector loop is the hypobranchial artery. The hypobranchial artery supplies the hypobranchial musculature. It branches then to the coronary artery, which supplies the heart. You can see small vessels on the surface of the heart itself. 
but it also branches to the pericardial artery, which supplies the pericardial cavity.